when we wanted to compare multiple means, so three or more means, we looked at the one-way analysis of variance test, or the ANOVA test. The ANOVA test was nice because it always had two hypotheses, um, the same two hypotheses. So our null hypothesis was always that all of the population means being considered were equal. In cases where we failed to reject the null hypothesis, that was a satisfying conclusion because we were able to, at the end of our analysis, say that based off the data, the population means seem to be equal. The alternative hypothesis, though, led us to what could be considered an unsatisfying conclusion. So the alternative hypothesis stated that at least one mean was different. So that's considered to be an unsatisfying conclusion because the ANOVA test itself doesn't tell us which mean was different. And more specifically, it doesn't tell us if multiple means were different or if it was just one of those population's means that differed from the others. So what we want to take a look at in this section is something called post hoc procedures. So post hoc means uh, essentially after the fact. So after we conduct an ANOVA test, if we reject the null hypothesis, meaning we conclude that at least one of those means was different, now we want to do some further investigations to figure out which and how many of those means were different. So the first example we want to consider here is taken straight from your homework. In the accompanying table are data listed on battery lives and hours for samples of laptops made by four different computer companies. So assuming that an ANOVA test was conducted with a significance level of 0.05, we would end up concluding that at least one of the means is different. So now what we want to do that's different in this section is perform a Tukey multiple comparison test at the 95% confidence level and then interpret those results. So essentially what we're going to do is, assuming that we already rejected the null hypothesis for an ANOVA test, we know that at least one of the means is different. We want to continue with this further investigation to find out which of those means is different. So in StatCrunch, we would pull up the one-way ANOVA tool. We would make sure all of our data sets are selected. And then what would differ here from what we've done already is that we would make sure to check this box to compute the Tukey HSD. So what that's going to do is add a section to our table below the ANOVA table. So we would already end up with our p-value for the ANOVA test, in this case 0 0.002. So at the stated significance level, we would reject the null hypothesis, conclude that at least one of the means is different, and now we would investigate which mean is the one that's different. So in this table, what we're going to see is, in the first table, brand A being subtracted from brand B C, and D, and then some results that follow. So this first row is considering brand A being subtracted from brand B, so B minus A. And then what we're generating, amongst other things, is a confidence interval with a lower bound and an upper bound. So what we're interested in considering is whether values in that interval include zero or don't include zero. So in this case, our lower bound starts at something negative and ends at something positive, meaning that zero is included in that interval. So the difference between our two population means equals zero, or that's the same thing as saying the population mean for brand B is equal to the population mean for brand A. So the confidence interval that we generated in this Tukey HSD results table tells us that the averages, the population averages for brand B and brand A are the same. Then we can look at brand A being subtracted from brand C. In this case, again, our interval goes from negative to positive, so that contains zero, which tells us that those two population averages are equal to each other. Then we can consider brand A being subtracted from brand D. 
Again, our confidence interval goes from negative values to positive values. So since zero is included in that interval, we can say that brand D, the population mean, is equal to brand A. So what we've established so far is that all three of these population, or I'm sorry, all four of these population means are equal to each other. But we know since we rejected the null hypothesis that at least one of these is going to end up being different, possibly more. So we have still two other tables to take a look at. In the second part of this table, we have brand B being subtracted from brand C. In this case, our interval goes from negative to positive. So that tells us that the average for brand C is equal to the average for brand B. So we still have a pair of averages that are equal to each other, a pair of means that are equal to each other. But then we look at brand B subtracted from brand D. In this case, our interval starts negative and ends negative, which means the difference between those two values, those two population means, has to be less than zero, or that the po population average for brand D is less than the population average for brand B. So now we've established a difference we have at least two means that are different from each other. And then we can look at our last pairing, brand C subtracted from brand D. Again, our interval goes from negative to positive, implying that those two averages are equal to each other. So when we look back at our possible answers up above, the first question that we want to answer is, which population means are different? And in this case, we would go with brands B and D, which would mean that mu2 and mu4, so this would be the same thing as saying the average for brand B and the average for brand D are the two that differ from each other. To interpret those results, we would in this case want to check option B, which says that with 95% confidence, the mean of brand B is greater than the mean of brand D, and no other population means can be declared different. So again, what we're considering here is our standard results for our ANOVA test, where we rejected the null hypothesis, and then we're looking at comparing one value which, with each of the other remaining averages, looking at the confidence intervals to see where zero is contained, if zero is in that interval, we can conclude that those averages are equal. But in a case where we find an interval that doesn't contain zero, then we can say that one of those averages is larger or smaller than the other, just depending on whether those values are negative or positive. So in this case, again, the difference between the average for brand D and the average for brand B, all values in that confidence interval were negative, implying the average for brand D has to be less than the average for brand B.